synthetic division. There's a couple things, really, really important things that we need to make sure we have. Um, first of all, what we're done is we're given a factor, x minus 5. Now remember, factors of a number. Think of the number 12. What is a factor of 12? And why is 3 a factor of 12? Because 3 times 4 equals 12, right? So you could say 3 divides into 12 how many times? 4 times. So if I tell you this is a factor, right, could you say then that this you can divide into that? Yes? Now, if it has, um, it can divide into it. Now, I can't remember, though. Um, what we're going to do is if it's a factor, then it will divide into it. But it's only a factor if it divides into there evenly with no remainder, right? All right? But if there is a remainder, then it's just a number that divides into it, but it's not actually going to be a factor of it, right? Think of 12, let's say the factor 5. 5 divides into it, but it doesn't evenly divide into it, right? But anyways, factors divide in. So if I was going to name this, remember those polynomials I said f of x, uh, q of x, r of x, d of x? What do you think this would be? This is what we're going to, what do you think this would be? The d. This is our divisor, right? This is what we're going to divide into our polynomial. And then this, we already named as our function, f of x. But we can label this our d of x. <coughs> and this is all getting into the division algorithm. So now, let's go and talk about, if we say that this is a factor. I don't know if it's a factor of this polynomial, but I know it's a factor. Now, what do we know about factors of a polynomial? If I'm given, I say, hey, th let's pretend that is a factor of a polynomial. What do we know about that factor? What will that tell us? What does the factor tell us? Correct, yes, it tells you what you can multiply, but more importantly, what have we been practicing so far? Yeah, and how do you find the zeros when you have a factor? You set, it equal, you set the factor equal to zero. You set all the factors. So we know that x minus 5 is a factor, right? There's probably a couple other factors that we don't know, and we set them all equal to zero. But if I'm given one factor, I know by applying the zero prime property, I can find a zero, right? Just by one factor, is assuming this is a factor of this polynomial. But you can take all your factors, set them equal to zero, and now you found the zeros, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're going to be applying synthetic division, we're not going to be concerned about what the factor is. We're only going to be concerned about the zero. Now, it's very important. When I get, if I give you factors, or if I give you a polynomial to apply in synthetic division, we need to make sure that we are dealing with linear factors meaning that it's a binomial in the linear to the first degree, okay? So now, if I'm going to be applying this, let's apply synthetic division to see. Is this a zero of this polynomial? So we'll do, we put the zero on the outside and you create a nice little box. Then, when applying synthetic division, what we do is we take the coefficients of our dividend, take the coefficients of our dividend and we line them up. Three, negative 17, 15, negative 25. We need to make sure that one, our dividend is in descending order, and then also, if we're missing any terms, what do we put in for the missing term? Zero, very good. All right, so synthetic division algorithm goes like this. First number, you bring down. That's the freebie we like to call it, okay? Now, the next thing is you multiply diagonally, add vertically. Three times five is 15. Negative 17 plus 15 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. 15 plus negative 10, positive 5. 5 times 5 is 25. That becomes 0. So guess what? Since this evenly divides into this polynomial, this is a factor. And that's actually pretty cool because if I know that that's a factor, then guess what? I can figure out the rest of these factors, right? We're not going to do that today, but I can figure out the rest of these factors. But we're not going to worry about that right now. All I want you guys to understand is this is what we call our remainder. Then we have our constant, linear, and quadratic. And what I mean by that is these are the coefficients. So I have 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now, when we're going back to that division algorithm, what would you say this is going to be? The what? What? What would be the name of this function? The what? It is a quadratic, and we can find the rest of the zeros. But remember, guys, I only gave you f of x, d of x, q of x, r of x. What would you call this one? 
Because this is the what? It's the quotient, right? Because when you add numbers, you get a sum. When you subtract, you get a difference. When you multiply, you get a product. And when you divide, you get a quotient. So that's our quotient. This would be our answer. All right? But I'm not asking you for what is the quotient. And then we say plus, you know, your remainder. And you, so you could say this is r of x, which is your remainder. What I'm asking you guys to do is write this in the division algorithm. So remember my division algorithm says f of x, which is this, equals my divisor times my quotient plus my remainder. Right? And we do really need to write plus zero. No. But you guys can see that this times this is going to produce <coughs> this. Right? So there you go. Now, one thing, yeah, let's, let's go back. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to.